Hi, everyone. I'm Jason Speckland, a cloud solution architect at Microsoft, and I desperately need a haircut. But I shall bravely soldier on for today's Azure Dev Tip. In today's tip, we're going to take a look at the two different ways that you can fire an Azure function in response to a file being uploaded to your blob storage. So the first way is pretty obvious, the blob storage trigger. I mean, it makes sense, right? But is that the only way to run your function when a blob is updated? No, there is another. You see, many different Azure services, including blob storage, send events to the Azure Event Grid service, and your Azure function can be triggered by that Event Grid event. Well, what's the difference? Let's take a look at some code to find out. Here I have two triggers, both alike in dignity, in Azure Functions where we lay our scene. Well, actually, okay, there's three functions here, but just ignore that third one for the moment. So our first one runs on a blob trigger, and that one just works so long as we give it the correct connection string right here to Azure Blob Storage. The second one, however, is triggered by Event Grid, and the first important bit to point out is that the event grid trigger will not just work unless we set it up that way. So let's take care of that. All right, so here uh, I have my, there's my resource group, and here is the storage account that I want to monitor. All right, so I will go into my container, and I will go to events, and here I will say event subscription. And let's see, uh, run on blob uploaded. Okay, and we're going to use the event grid schema here. Um, and the event types, I actually only care about blobs being created, not deleted. And my endpoint type is going to be an Azure function. So here it's going to ask me to select an endpoint. And it'll give me the various function apps that I have. There's my event grid triggered one, and it's going to see that there's only one function that's actually triggered by event grid, and it's going to pop that up for me. Now that we've set up our trigger, what does the app actually do? Well, it listens for messages from either trigger and then relays them to a SignalR hub. Now, SignalR allows us to have real-time two-way communication with the web application. And in our web app, we'll see each function fire in real time. So let's take a look for now at that third function. So this function provides an endpoint called negotiate that our clients can call to connect to our SignalR hub. Now, you can see there's not much code here. You see, SignalR in serverless mode makes it very easy to enable two-way communication and chat inside of Azure Functions. But that is another show. So this is our client app. It's a simple JavaScript React application, and it's going to use the SignalR libraries to connect to our SignalR hub and just display any messages that it gets. And those messages are going to come from our Azure functions, which will both be triggered when a file is uploaded to our blob storage. So uh, let's see that in action. So here on one half of the screen, I've got my application running, waiting for those messages. And here I have the Azure portal. And here, once again, is that storage account that I want to monitor. So here is our blob container, files. And I'm going to uh, upload some files here. So let me select a file and my file, sample file one. OK, now we hit upload. And there we go, the event grid has fired. OK, so let's wait and see how long it takes for that blob storage trigger to fire. <laughs> Aha, there it is. Wow, over 11 minutes later, if you can believe it. So why did the blob storage trigger take way, way longer than the event grid trigger? Well, 
To be fair, I set it up for the worst possible scenario. You see, I waited a long time before actually doing this demo to ensure that all of these Azure functions were inactive. And I deployed each of those functions to a separate function app to ensure that the event grid triggered app wouldn't wake up the blob storage trigger app. So the big difference is that the event grid is, well, event driven. The event is fired and Azure Functions wakes up the app right away and processes the event. But the blob storage trigger is actually polling the blob storage. And when the function is inactive, Azure Functions will only poll once every few minutes to see if a new blob appears and the function needs to be awakened. So as you can see, if I upload another file right here, it's actually going to uh, run both pretty quickly. There's our event grid. And there's our blob. So still not instantaneous, but much, much better than uh, 11 minutes. If there are two triggers, then when should I use each one? Ugh, if only the documentation had anything to say about this. Oh wait, it does, but I didn't know because I didn't read it. I mean, you want to trigger on blob storage. There's a blob storage trigger right there. So you don't think too hard about it, right? Uh, oldest story in the book, read the fine manual. Well, here's the doc page for uh, the Azure blob storage trigger. And right here, right up top, alternatives, event grid trigger. So when do you want to use that event grid trigger? Well, uh, for one thing, if you're using a blob only storage account, now those are kind of older uh, legacy type things. You generally don't want to be using those now for new stuff. A uh, high scale. So if you have containers with more than 100,000 blobs in them, because you can imagine that that would make polling it very computationally expensive. And of course, the last area, which is what we talked about here, minimizing latency. So there can be up to a 10 minute delay, or maybe a little longer than 10 minutes, in processing new blobs if a function app has gone idle, like ours did. Something to watch out for. So if you'd like to take a closer look at the code that I used for the client and the server, well, it's all up in my GitHub. I'll post a link in the description. And of course, it wouldn't be a proper YouTube video if I didn't remind you to like this video and subscribe to the Microsoft Dev Radio channel. So this has been today's Azure Dev Tip. Thank you so much, stay safe, and happy coding.